How's it going, everybody? I'm Jackson Hawkins Kimmel. And I'm Jameson Hawkins Kimmel. And, and together, we are the Brothers Wild. And this is our third visit to our trip at Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Now we have come to the Alum Cave Trail. And we've seen most of the common salamander species within the park, but now we're gonna search for the rare and endangered species of the Smoky Mountains. So let's explore the first creek and hope for the best. Now everybody, we've just found the first species of salamander of the day, which is actually a new species, the seal salamander. Which is a common species in this park, but we have yet to film it. They look similar to duskies, but the way to tell them apart is they're usually a brighter or lighter brown. They have a specific marking along their back of very faint orangish spots. Now these salamanders can get really big. How big can they get, Jackson? Like Probably about like six inches. Holy moly, that's huge. And here's a little tip. So if we've been looking all along the creek and in it, but we found out that most of the salamanders take refuge near the creek. Because they, they, I guess they don't want to be in the water, they just want to be moist. So let's see if we can find some more. And hopefully that'll be like a Blue Ridge Spring or something. Because that would be awesome. Yeah, that's how you do it. Second Blue Ridge Two Line Salamander of the trip. Wow, this is an utterly beautiful yet small salamander found in moist areas along creeks. We had to dig him out because he tried to bury himself into the ground. And here's a quick little side fact. Now, it's called Blue Ridge Two-Line Salamander because it lives in the Blue Ridge Mountains. But, and the Blue Ridge Mountains is part of the Appalachian mountain range chain. And the Smoky Mountains do not exist. There's no such thing. They just call it Great Smoky Mountains National Park because a lot of times you can see blue fog and stuff in the mountains, which gave it its name, the Smoky Mountains. You wanna let him back under the rock tracks? Let's do it. Kinda of feels funny when he... Okay, yeah, I'll just set him next to this rock. Oh, he is, now he doesn't wanna leave my hand. Come on, go on. Yes, there's your home. Yeah, go on. Oh, I don't know what he's doing now. Huh, okay. Well, let's leave him be. Now everybody, we have just found a salamander that we believe is a baby mud puppy. Now, actually a full grown mud puppy is like around 25 inches, but this might be a baby mud puppy, maybe a baby Blue Ridge Spring. I don't know. We're not quite sure yet. It could even be a baby Hellbender. We're gonna have to do our research when we get back home. He sure likes to skip. He does. I don't think he can breathe. Now, are mud puppies blind like other cave-like salamanders? Um, I'm pretty sure they are. But they're not found in caves like other salamanders that are blind. No, they're normally found in large rivers and large creeks. All right, so let's go back to the rock where he was and let's go set him back. See what else we can find. Now, we've just found another red-backed salamander and this one's back is extra red. Now, here's a really interesting fact. They're actually in I think so, they're definitely threatened. And as you can see, a way to tell them apart from a similar, like let's say Cherokee Mountain Dusky Salamander, is their back is pretty bright red and it's perfectly aligned with two stripes along each side. How big do they get? They're a pretty small salamander. Like, that's probably almost full grown. They, uh, red back salamanders don't get that big. For you viewers that live on the West Coast, there is also a western redback salamander that looks very similar. In fact, I'm not sure how you tell them apart. We've found a, another salamander that we believe might be a Santitla dusky salamander. Which is actually a uh, rarer species of dusky salamander here in the Smoky Mountains. And you know what's some interesting about salamanders? You'll never believe this. They're toxic. So if you touch them, Make sure to wash your hands when you get home because they do have toxic skin. Would you like to hear a fact about both salamanders and frogs? What's that? Salamanders and frogs sometimes have tongues that are longer than their bodies. That's crazy. Wow, that's really, that's really neat. We've just found one of the most endangered salamanders in the world. The red-cheeked salamander can only be found in the Great Smokies National Park. 
and this is one of our main target species of the trip. Now these are also known as the Jordan salamanders and are not really found in or around creeks but more near the creeks, under logs and in logs. And I see why they call it the red cheek salamander. Look at that big red line down its, both of its cheeks. Now there is a uh, salamander, it's called an imitator salamander. Which we saw on the Trillium Gap Trail. They're actually just as rare, but the difference is they're usually smaller and they have these brownish stripes across their back, a smaller red cheek, and if you look real closely, they have these faint white stripes across their lips. And the reason they imitate the red cheek salamander is because the red cheek salamander is for some reason distasteful and avoided by most predators. Oh, 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 don't go away, no salamander. Well, everybody, this brings an end to our visit at Aylan Cave Trail. And boy, we saw several very uncommon species of salamander, including the ultra rare red cheek salamander, which is why I think with a little effort, the adventures you can have are endless. I'm Jameson Hawkins. And I'm Jackson Hawkins Killer. And together, we are the Brothers Wild. Bye everybody, keep it wild.